Sally. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. So uh, welcome to St. Francis of Assisi. In the, uh, in the beginning of uh, February, generally, there are a lot of feast days back to back. So on February 1st is the Feast of St. Bridget. On February 2nd is the Feast of the Presentation, which liturgically, formally concludes the season of Christmas. And then uh, today, yesterday was the Feast of St. Blaise, in which we bless throats. So generally, uh, uh, those uh, feasts are, um, are uh, separated uh, during the different days. But here at St. Francis, as we often do, we bring them all together. And we celebrate them in a way that uh, might reflect our great joy at the traditions of the church, which speaks to us in so many ways about the reality of, of God in our lives, the light of Christ. So today, uh, we're going to start in the back, and there's some candles for you, right? Uh, uh, the Feast of the, come on in. The Feast of the Presentation is also known as Candlemas Day. And so we, uh, we light, uh, we uh, uh, bless candles that you might want to use in your home. So you probably didn't bring any, but the ones that you take in the back, take them home, right? because we've been using them and using them and using them. So if everybody goes in the back, we'll start in the back. How's that? So, and there's candles in the back for you, all right? No cookies, but candles. We're going to go in the back. Let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And also with you. 
the, uh, the uh, reason we begin outside of church in a procession, it reflects our, our, our understanding of ourselves as a pilgrim people marching towards Christ who is our light. And so on this feast we begin uh, in a place outside of the church and we will father, uh, follow uh, uh, the Paschal candle, Father GD in after we light our candles, all right? Dear brothers and sisters, 40 days have passed since we celebrated the joyful feast of the Nativity of the Lord. Today is the blessed day when Jesus was presented in the temple by Mary and Joseph. Outwardly, he was fulfilling the law, but in relation, he was coming to meet his believing people. Prompted by the Holy Spirit, Simeon and Anna came to the temple. Enlightened by the same spirit, they recognized the Lord and confessed him with exultation. So let us also, gathered together by the Holy Spirit, proceed to the house of God to encounter Christ. There we shall find him and recognize him in the breaking of the bread until he comes, in, 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 until he comes again in revealed glory. And let us pray. If you hold your candles up, I'll, I'll bless them. O oh God, source of all, uh, source and origin of all light. <coughs> who on this day showed to the just man Simeon and the just woman Anna the light for revelation to the Gentiles, we humbly ask that in answer to your prayer, people's prayer, you may be pleased to sanctify with your blessing these candles. So that treading the path of virtue, we may reach the light which, which never fails through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So on your way in, if you would light your candle on your, or uh, uh, we'll light, I'm oh, sorry, uh, we'll follow this. Uh, we'll light them from here and then if you uh, pass the light along, that might be a nice way to do that. Go in peace to meet the Lord.
And let us pray. Out of your power and compassion, O God, you sent your Son into our afflicted world to proclaim the day of salvation. Heal the brokenhearted, bind up our wounds, bring us health of body and spirit, and raise us to new life in your service. We make our prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Job. Job spoke to his friends. Does not the human being have a hard service on earth? And are their days like the days of a laborer? Like a slave who longs for the shadow and like a laborer who looks for their wages, so I am allotted months of emptiness and nights of misery are apportioned to me. When I lie down, I say, when shall I rise? But the night is long, and I am full of tossing until dawn. My days are swifter than the weaver's shuttle, and come to their end without hope. Remember that my life is a breath. My eyes will never again see good. The word of the Lord. Praise the Lord who heals the broken hearted. Praise the Lord who heals the broken hearted. Praise the Lord for he is good. Sing praise to our God, for he is gracious. It is fitting to praise him. The Lord rebuilds Jerusalem, the dispersed of Israel he gathers. Praise the Lord who heals the broken hearted. the broken hearted and binds up their wounds. He tells the number of the stars. He calls them each by name. Praise the Lord who heals the broken hearted. Great is our Lord mighty in power to his wisdom there is no limit the Lord sustains the holy the wicked he casts to the ground praise the Lord who heals the broken hearted
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if I proclaim the gospel, that gives me no ground for boasting, for an obligation is laid on me, and woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward. But if not of my own will, I am entrusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Just this, that in my proclamation, I may make the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so that I might win more of them. <clears throat> To the weak, I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that I might by all means save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I may share in its blessings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to Lord. As soon as Jesus and his disciples left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told Jesus about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they brought to Jesus all who were sick or possessed with demons. And the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons and he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, Jesus got up and went out to a deserted place and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, everyone is searching for you. He answered, let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also. For this is what I came out to do. And Jesus went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. Brothers and sisters, the good news of salvation, the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. By the words of the Holy Gospel, may our sins be blotted away. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So, um, this morning, uh, as we were gathering for Mass, uh, Hap asked me if we were giving anything away, <laughs> because there's so many of us here. But I was thinking you're all here to pray for your team in the, in the Super Bowl, right? So, right? so maybe, right? Yes, exactly. Go Eagles, right? Uh, I'm from Philly. I don't follow it, but, uh, but my, family, um, my family is... Uh, 
is uh, rooting for the Phillies. So uh, I, I don't, I don't uh, the Eagles, sorry, sorry. So, there, there you go, that might tell you about my knowledge of, the, of these, uh, these kinds of things. But in any case, I'm glad you're all here. I'm so glad that you're all here. Uh, and I, I, um, I always think about um, us together and how my kind of uh, spirituality is formed by, by being here with you and hopefully yours is formed by being here in the celebrations that we do here at St. Francis in, in real and meaningful ways. And so, so when, we, when we gather uh, to celebrate important moments in the life of the church through the liturgy, we are also somehow, I think, celebrating important uh, moments or realizations or revelations in our life as well. And so uh, I have some of, uh, some of the priests in the ANCC remind me that uh, they say you, you celebrate Mass like an old Philadelphia priest. <laughs> I think in many ways, the roots of how I have come to understand the significance and the meaning of our tradition really is in, in, in that sense for me, right? Of us coming together as a parish community and, and, and knowing each other and recognizing each other and celebrating in so many ways our union and our communion uh, in the love of God made manifest in Jesus Christ. And so, so when we gather for the, the Feast of the Presentation and after Mass, we'll bless the throats. All of those reflect for us something of what I think that Job was trying to get out but was maybe missing the point, that God is present to us in every moment of our life. God is there with us in, the, in, 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 in having a sore throat or in our, our, our pilgrimage uh, uh, towards salvation uh, through, the, through the sacraments of the church. And so when we hear these readings, and I thought it was such a juxtaposition, we're beginning outside with the celebration of light and, and, uh, <coughs> and pilgrimage and, and uh, you know, uh, 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 encouraging each other on the march, as it were, and then we hear this reading from Job, right? <laughs> where all life is drudgery, oh my God. I can't believe how often that happens to me. I was literally driving uh, from the hospital uh, this morning for mass to here, and I was on the phone with my sister complaining how tired I was. <laughs> oh my God, I'm so tired, I'm so tired. My sister has no sympathy for me, by the way. She tells me that I should not have become a priest, right? So, so she has absolutely no sympathy for me whatsoever. But this idea that in moments of our life where we, like Job, we say to ourselves, what is the point? What is the point, right? I have done everything I'm supposed to do and look what happens to me. At the end of the book of Job, which I love, there's some poetry in that, right? So at the end of that, everything is restored to Job. But I think the connection between the first reading and the gospel might be this, that while Job was wondering about his life being all drudgery and how quickly his life moves, he forgets that it is in the context of God's love for us that we are created and that God is never absent from us in our joy or in our sorrow. And so what we see for us uh, with the fulfillment of all of the prophecies in the coming of Jesus Christ is the end purpose of our whole life, the teleological goal of our whole life in the person of Jesus Christ. And so, so when we hear this from Job, while he eventually comes around to that in the midst of this, he is pretty much, uh, uh, what was the, I think when we were growing up, Debbie Downer, someone who was always right. So, but in the midst of that, we, are, we need to be reminded that God's action in our life is always to show forth God's glory and love in our life. So even in the midst of our pain and our despair and our sorrow, God is in absent. But because of God's love, God uses that in ways that you know and I know. All of a sudden, through the, through the midst of some awful time in our life, a light breaks, right? And we feel better. I was saying to Sister Maria today, sometimes during my day, I'll feel an unexpected consolation. I'll feel an unexpected joy. And what I know is somebody's praying for me. I love that notion that when that happens, somebody's praying for me. A moment in my day when something is lifted, right? And that's what you and I come to celebrate every time we gather at the, at the word of God and, and are nourished uh, by his body and blood and nourished by each other's presence here. That's what's so phenomenal. <clears throat> so when we hear this, this reading from Job, later <clears throat> in the text, which I love this poem, Jesus, uh, God says to Job, uh, and I, I kind of like it, there's some, there's some beauty in this. There's some reflection of God's care that culminates in the person of Jesus Christ. But he says to Job, where were you, O son of man, this morning? Where were you? Where were you when I called the lights into existence? Where were you when I separated the day from the night? 
Where were you, right? He's trying to say to Job is, I'm not very far from your care, right? In so many ways, I created the universe, right? And so you are the, you are the pinnacle of my creation and I won't forget about you. And so we hear this, uh, uh, this, this uh, uh, we only read um, uh, from Job three times in the, in the liturgical cycle. And maybe that's because we don't want to leave depressed, right? <laughs> in some ways, right? But in so many ways, the idea that the wisdom in Job is for us to find God in the midst of all of our experiencing and including our pain and sorrow. And that theologically is called theodicity. Where is God, right? Uh, uh, a wonderful rabbi wrote a, a beautiful book called When Bad Things Happen to Good People, trying to help us to understand that God doesn't intend bad things for us. If something bad happens to us, God is in the mix with us. God will use that to show forth his love for us somehow. It might not feel it in the moment, right? And many times you and I have had those experiences, we could have gone to our grave happy not having had them, right? But we are shaped by them, we are formed by them, and in some cases we are the stronger for them. And so when we gather today to hear this, and then we hear this beautiful reading that concludes the first chapter of Mark. Mark, Mark, uh, Mark is the shortest of the Gospels, and so we hear how when Mark concludes this first chapter, that uh, from the very beginning, different than, than, than the other Gospels, different than Luke and Matthew, Mark kind of gets right to the point, right? So we hear a little bit in, in when Mark begins his Gospel, something that his hearers would have recognized was from Genesis, right? The Gospel of Mark says, in the beginning. And so people would have heard and recognized that that's how Genesis begins. So they would have gotten this sense that God is creating something new here. They would have recognized that. And so we hear in the Gospel of Mark how Jesus in the programmatic passages has come to proclaim the presence of the kingdom of God. That's what he has come to do. He has come to preach. Last week we spoke about this. Mark tells us what a great preacher Jesus was, and yet he often doesn't tell us what Jesus preached. He doesn't tell us the content of that, right? But what I think was equally as powerful as what he was preaching was his presence, was the presence to the people of God who we hear throughout the scripture. Who is this that he speaks with such knowledge? Who is he that he speaks with such authority? There was something about Jesus' intimate relationship with the Father that shone through his life. And so when he preached, people were not only moved by what he said, but by who he was as well, uh, right? The presence of God as you and I are here, sometimes at the sacrifice of the Mass. And so we hear how in this gospel, the, uh, at the end of the first gospel, uh, first uh, chapter of Mark, how Jesus last week uh, 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 cleansed the unclean spirit and how he goes right from there to Peter's house. He's in Peter's house. We get such images of the humanity of the people who follow Jesus. He goes to Peter's house. Now these are Peter, James, and John, right? These are people who had just left their trade and their tackle. They had just left and they're following him. And now all of a sudden, the man who they follow is going to his house, right? And they get to the house and they do what we all do. When we don't know what to do with something, we turn to God in prayer. And so they turn to Jesus and they say, uh, uh, we don't know Peter's mother-in-law's name, but we know that she's sick. And in the translation, she's very sick. She's not just kind of, uh, you know, tired and weary. She's really sick. And so the word that Jesus uses, he goes, and listen to this, as in the unclean person, as with uh, Peter's <coughs> mother-in-law, and next Sunday with the, uh, cleaning, uh, the curing of the leper, he goes to those people in a society who are untouchable, right? And he speaks to them. He tells the unclean spirit in last week's gospel to be quiet. He doesn't necessarily say anything to Peter's mother-in-law, except he goes and he touches her and he says, rise up. It's the same verb that is used when we talk about the resurrection. So in the miracles of Jesus, we are seeing a transformation of physical and, and health, but also a transformation of our spiritual health in which we recognize for us the peace that comes from the understanding that it is in the resurrection when all will be made whole again. And so we hear this, these gospels are so filled um, with, uh, with Jesus and the compassion of God reaching out to restore, to make new again, right? All that has been damaged uh, 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 by, 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 um, uh, by failings, right? And so when we hear this particular gospel and we think about this, we also hear a rhythm. 
of how Jesus' preaching and his active ministry is nourished by prayer. So early in the morning, before anybody's up, he goes off, right? He goes off, he goes out into the desert to commune with God, to be with God. But what happens? What happens? So I love this translation. Peter, James, and John hunted for Jesus. <laughs> Did you hear that? They hunted for They didn't just look for him, right? They hunted for Jesus. And I, I got to tell you, I couldn't help thinking about the attachments that we have to people that we love and the sense of security we get in, in their presence. When I was, when I was uh, young, I, um, I was very attached to my mother. And so probably a hundred times a day, I would yell, Mom, Mom, <laughs> Mom, where are you? Mom, where are you, right? And she would yell back, I ran away, right? Just, just to be done with me, I think, right? Just to be done with me. But there's something in that desire that the apostles uh, and his followers that were motivated by a desire to be in the presence of Christ, and so they hunted for him. You and I and the apostles, we've probably been, been somehow searching for Christ our whole life, right? And in this moment of great, of, uh, of great uh, uh, participation in the life of the church, we have found again, we have found again the origin of our heart's capacity to love. Isn't that astounding? So they go and they find him. And what do they say? Everybody's looking for you. Everybody's looking for you. We heard last week how his fame spread. And so people from all over the town, as we would, right? As we would, people from all over the town uh, came and they wanted to be healed by him. They wanted to be made whole by him. They wanted to be restored in a way that would allow them to participate fully in the life of the community. And that's what happens for you and I because of the person of Jesus Christ we have the ability, no matter what we've done, how bad we think we are, how untouchable we think we are, uh, whatever we think we've done, none of that matters. Through, the, through, through our communion with each other and with Christ, we are healed and made whole again. Isn't that astounding? You know that there's a little difference between healing and curing. Sometimes I'm with people who get some very devastating medical news, and it really, it really throws them for a loop. Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's an irreversible uh, medical condition. And so the initial shock of that, as it begins to wear off, and perhaps they understand and organize their life in different ways, they reprioritize, they, they move in different ways to establish uh, relationships that are meaningful to them or reestablish them, and all of a sudden they're living their life more fully. There's a healing in the knowledge, right? There's a healing, something happens that reorients them, right? We go to God in prayer. We ask uh, that, that no matter what happens to us, that we might understand that in the depths of that despair, God is with us, and there's a healing that begins to happen for us, right? We no longer are so, um, so angry or so worrisome, right? We're no longer so anxious in the world. There's a peace that, that comes upon us. So there's a healing that happens, even though a cure maybe hasn't been affected, right? But when Jesus cures, it's immediate. There is an immediate restoration to health. But so much so that what we hear in this is what we are asked to do when we receive that healing balm in our life, is to serve others. Right away, what does the mother-in-law of Peter do? She gets up and she cooks. She serves them. The word in Greek is diakonos, right? She serves them. Out of her joy at being restored, there is a desire to share that with others, right? And so she ministers uh, to, to those. And that's what you and I are asked to do. And so when you and I come here, maybe in the, the beginning of a very long winter and we feel uh, not so much energy and we're kind of down and, and uh, maybe traveling so much, right? And all of a sudden we come here and, uh, and, and the priest asks us to participate in a procession, right? Just when we don't think we have any more energy, right? And then we, we, hear the, uh, we hear the wonderful Gloria and the familiar words of the dialogue of the Mass. And all of a sudden, inside of us, the, 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 the fire is being relit, right? There's something that restores us. We, we are being nourished and fed for the, for the next week, right? Um, uh, in the Irish, when the, uh, the, when the, uh, the fire would uh, windle down at night, there was a little uh, spark in the fire. It's called a Gershon. And so you would blow on it, so in the next morning you would relight the fire. It's a fire in these ashes, right? And so in some ways, maybe that's what we do when we come and we listen again, right? How this living word of God takes hold of our hearts and our minds and our souls, and we are healed and transformed 
And we are changed, right? We are changed in the blink of an eye, St. Paul will tell us later, right? In the blink of an eye. So as we gather as God's people today, as we listen to the word of God uh, move in our being, uh, maybe you and I can begin to uh, uh, explore and look in our lives when we were touched uh, uh, by Christ in such a way, in areas that we thought maybe we were untouchable. Or we might look at how we reach out to those who are marginalized. We might begin to see, <coughs> as with Peter's mother-in-law, that what Christ has done, we are asked to do as well, right? And that we are to go around to the byways and the highways and bring those, right, uh, who feel somehow that they're not worthy to participate fully in the body of Christ because it's never true. So let's continue in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us stand and profess our faith as we say, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, one in being with the Father. Through God all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day he rose again in the fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As a people of faith, we now offer our prayers and petition to God our Father through Christ our Lord. Our refrain for today will be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the refugees of the world fleeing violence, persecution, and death, that God will open the hearts of those that they turn to, and that the world will come together to provide innocent people with a safe refuge and the necessities of a dignified life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God will instill wisdom, compassion, and understanding amongst the leaders of the nations and guide them into ways of peace and justice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the ANCC and for all world religions, that they fulfill their mission as servants of Christ and stewards of God's mysteries by reminding us not only of God's bountiful love for us, but also of our duty as trustworthy stewards to share that bounty with others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. When we gather together, we gather as one holy communion, looking to God as the source of our strength and our salvation. This month, we especially pray for the prayer community of Peekskill, New York, and our own St. Francis of Assisi Cathedral Church right here in Glenville, Glenridge. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Paul describes how he has a calling or an obligation to serve God and his fellow man. He does this not to be rewarded, but because the service he freely gives is its own reward. May we also strive to discern where our services may be needed then give of ourselves freely to help others and to serve the Lord. We pray, we pray to, to the Lord. Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As human beings, like Job, we all have earthly burdens and hardship that we find difficult to bear. May we find the courage not to curse God for our misfortunes, but rather to find solace and joy in the blessings and good moments he presents to us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For healing for the sick, those in hospitals, nursing homes, rehabilitation, and hospice, that they may receive the spiritual and emotional support they need, and for strength and patience for their caregivers. And are there any sick we would especially remember today? Dave, Mark, Chuck, 
residents of Van Dyke, Brookdale, and Horizon Manor nursing homes? Misty. Don Seal. Sebastian. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that God, who gives us the promise of eternal life, will grant them full, fullness of salvation and provide comfort to their families. We especially pray today for Richard Joseph Donahue and Natal Natalia Nardone. And are there any others whom we should especially remember? Scott. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> As a parish community, if you would join me in this uh, uh, next uh, month of uh, praying for uh, our ordinandi, those who will be ordained in March. So for Deacon Pat, who will be ordained to the presbytery, to the priesthood. For Deacon Don Simon in North Dakota, who will be ordained to the priesthood and for Bernardo Cardona, who will be ordained to the diaconate, that God might uh, bless them uh, with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with great graces to serve his people as Paul did, not thinking the cost. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. And if you would uh, continue to pray with me for my niece, who is uh, scheduled to deliver her twins on Wednesday, that God might indeed uh, preserve her uh, in health. Uh, for this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Most high, glorious God, we bring you our prayers and petitions, those which we've spoken aloud and those in the depths of our heart. We ask you to hear and answer them if they be for our good, for we make them in the name of Christ, your Son. Amen. Amen. Our offertory song is Here I Am, Lord, song number 542. Yeah. 
of the gifts in the liturgy of the Eucharist uh, in the Mass, what we come to recognize is that all that is brought to God's altar is transformed by God's love uh, into something uh, for the people of God. So the bread and wine uh, in their uh, substance are transformed into the body and blood and soul divinity of Christ. The donations that you make are transformed into uh, sustaining the parish with helping us uh, pay our bills. And on today, in a very special way, the children of our parish have prepared mementos uh, for uh, those who are incarcerated and or hospitalized so that by, uh, by their actions and their gifts being brought to the altar, their, their and your love is being transformed and translated to people uh, who maybe uh, don't have anyone in the world who cares for them. So just so you know. So pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of our hands for the praise, for the praise and glory of God's name. For our good and good and good and good and Lord God, you have provided food and drink to sustain our earthly life. Grant, we pray, that this bread and wine may become the sacrament that gives eternal life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give us thanks and praise. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Holy, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. We know that your boundless glory is shown in this, that you, the Most High God, came to the rescue of our mortal nature. In our very weakness, you found a remedy. That, that, nat that nature which had led to our downfall became the means of our salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adore you and rejoice in your presence forever. May our voices join with theirs in their triumphant hymn of praise. creation rightly gives you praise. All life, all holiness comes from you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, 
by the working of the Holy Spirit. From age to age you gather a people to yourselves, so that from the rising of the sun to the setting, a perfect offering may be made to the glory of your name. And so, Lord God, we humbly pray, by the power of your Spirit, sanctify these gifts that we have brought before you, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this Eucharist. On the night he was handed over to death, he took bread and gave you thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to all of those whom he loved, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, and handing the cup to all of those whom he loved, he said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread of life, when we drink from this holy cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, till you come again. When Calling to mind, Lord God, the death your Son endured for our salvation, his glorious resurrection and ascension into heaven, and eagerly awaiting the day of his return, we offer you with thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look with favor on your church's offering and see the victim by whose sacrifice you were pleased to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son may be filled with his Holy Spirit and become one body, one spirit in Christ. Let him make us an everlasting gift to you, that we may share in the inheritance of your saints with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the Apostles, the Martyrs, St. Francis and St. Claire, and all your saints on whose constant intercession we rely for help. Lord, may this sacrifice which has made our peace with you advance the peace and salvation of all the world, strengthen in faith and love your pilgrim church on earth, your servants, the patriarchs of Alexandria, Antioch, Constantinople, Jerusalem, and Rome, George, our bishop, all bishops, priests, and deacons, all ministers of your church, and the entire people your son has gained for you. Merciful Father, hear the prayers of the family you have gathered here before you, and unite to yourself all your children now scattered over the face of the earth. Welcome in your kingdom our departed brothers and sisters. with these and all who have left this world in your friendship. We hope to enjoy forever the vision of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you give the world everything that is good. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, 
Apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us take a moment and offer to each other a sign of Christ's peace. Sisters and brothers, <clears throat> this is Jesus, our Lamb of God. This is Jesus who invites each and every one of us into the experience of God's love, and how happy are we to be called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Here at St. Francis of Assisi, each and every one of you are invited into full participation in the sacrament of the altar. May the body of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Our communion hymn will be On Eagle's Wings, song number 598. <laughs> Oh, okay. 
tattered terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day. Though thousands fall about you, near you it shall not come. To guide you in all of your ways Upon their hands they will bear you up Lest you dash your foot against a stone And he prays you up Shelter of the Lord, who abide in his shadow, O love. Say to the Lord, my refuge, my rock, in whom I trust.
Let us pray. Merciful God, you have invited us to share in the one bread and the one cup. Enable us to live as one in Christ and to labor gladly for, for the salvation of all. Grant this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the announcement. Today's announcements are please join us on Ash Wednesday, February 14th, for Mass as we begin our Lenten journey. Our Mass times for Ash Wednesday will be 8 a.m. and 7 p.m. Please join us on our joint New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Connecticut, Lenten Day of Reflection on February 17th from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. It will be a good activity for us to kick off our Lenten journey. Lunch and materials will be provided for a modest fee of $30. Please join us for our February fling, dinner and social on February 24th, 6 p.m. at the Robinson Hall. We will also introduce our new parish council during this event. More details regarding this event will be provided soon. Admission is about $8 per person. With praise and thanksgiving to Almighty God, the American National Ch Catholic Church joyfully announces the ordination of our brothers, Reverend McDonald Simon, Reverend Patrick Kane, to the priesthood of Jesus Christ, and Mr. Bernardo Cardona to the sac sacred order of deacons through laying of hands and invocation of the Holy Spirit by Most Reverend George R. Lucy, FCM, on March 18th at 7 p.m. Please join us. As an action to call to follow Jesus, today the religious education students made Valentine's cards for people in the nursing homes and the jail that our parish family serves. We thank the Eucharistic ministers and the Bishop George, Father GD, and Deacon Pat for bringing our gifts and prayers to them. Our next religious education class for children will be on February 25th at 10 a.m. Please join us for our Filipino Mass on the first and third Sundays at 5 p.m. The next Filipino Mass is February 4th at 5 p.m. Please join us in praying the Rosary on the first and third Sundays of the month. The next date is February 18th. If you plan to include any announcements in the bulletin and at Mass, please send to Father GD on or before Wednesday of the week. Thank you. So please come and be part of the ordination. We're going to uh, uh, have a little reception afterwards. And so be part of this with us. And also the multi-parish uh, 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 retreat. I think that'll be a good time for us to, to uh, reflect with each other on our Lenten journey. I was thinking uh, the church, in so many ways, uh, we move in the communion of the saints. And in this, uh, in this uh, cold and flu season, the church in her wisdom has given us the feast of St. Blaise. St. Blaise was the bishop of Turkey. And uh, there was a young fellow there who was choking on a fishbone. And so the mother ran to St. Blaise, and St. Blaise, I guess, did an early Heimlich, and, <laughs> uh, and the fishbone came out. But in any case, as a result of, um, of the child being saved, his, um, his, uh, his patronage is we ask him to intercede for us in these winter months that we may be free from all ailments of our ears, nose, and throat. So I know we've done a lot of walking, but if you come up one more time, I'm going to put the candles on either side of your throat, and I'm going to bless your throats. When I was in the minor seminary, we had a, uh, uh, my French master, Montpair, who wasn't always thinking, and we, after Mass, we went in to get the candles, and he lit them. And I said, I said oh, no, Montpair, uh, we have to, the people's hair. He said, no, no, we must, we must. So, uh, so uh, uh, anyway, we blew them out. But anyway, I, I'm not going to light them. So, uh, so uh, maybe Paul, thank Paul, Paul for playing for us. Thank you so much, thank Paul. You. Thank you. Um, please keep Pete in your prayers. He has uh, the flu. Uh, our general, uh, our, our general, our usual cantor has the flu. So please keep him in your prayers, if you would. Anybody new? Anybody with us for the first time that wants to introduce themselves? As I'm looking at Ty. <laughs> Welcome to St. Francis. Welcome to St. Francis. Uh, they, uh, I, I, uh, I generally joke it's the second time we see you, we put you to work, but they were in the offertory procession. So, right? so, so we got them. So, uh, so if you would come up, uh, I'll bless your throats, and then we'll do the dismissal. Oh, the 
God who brings you life to birth in me. My spirit soars on the wings of my Lord. All that I am sings of the God who brings you spirit soul on the wings of my Lord. My soul gives glory to the Lord, rejoicing in my saving God, who looks upon me in my state, and all the world will call me blessed, for God works marvels in my sight, and holy is God's name. of the God who brings you life to birth in me. My spirit soars on the wings of my Lord. God mercy is from age to age to age to those who follow him in fear, whose arm is power and strength scatters all the proud heart who cast the mighties from their thrones and raises up the lowly ones all that i have sings of the god who brings you life to birth in me my spirit soars on the wings of my lord Starving with good things, the rich are left empty with their hands, protecting all the faithful ones, remembering Israel with mercy. The promise to those before and to their children forever. All that I am sings of a God who brings you life to birth. Spirit souls on the wings of my Lord. My spirit souls on the wings of my
So, uh, uh, so it was Michael, my neighbor was coming up uh, to get his throat blessed. He asked me if this was as good as the flu shot. So, <laughs> so I wanted to say this is the Catholic flu shot. <laughs> so the Lord be with you. And with you. Bow down for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go forth from this place in great peace and joy, proclaiming the good news of the Gospel. Thanks be to God. We are sent forth singing, Christ be our light, song number 656. Six. your own holy people, light for the world to see. Christ be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ be our light, shine in your church, gather Your living voice. 